But watching what this did to people mm -hmm. and to, to think, okay, now we have a legal version of that that, you know, the, the big pharma can sell. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's still heroin. Sure. You know, I don't care what you call it, that they made it up in their laboratory. Well, that's what these drug dealers do. They make it up in their laboratory. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no difference to that. Sure. You know, and if that upsets somebody, I'm sorry. Well, you know, it, it, well, well, yes, we we need to find the alternatives. You know, I mean, that's sure. what we talk about a lot are, you mm -hmm. know, finding the alternatives. Sure. Other than putting that crap in there that's destroying your brain and your body. So, sure. you know, I, I think, and I, I'm going to stick up for the people, because and, and, I know exactly what both of y'all are saying and where you're going with it, and I agree with y'all 110%. But I want to make sure that the people listening know that, you know, we're not criticizing anyone. We understand and we know that taking this medication can and does cause addiction. We know that. And that's, right. that's why we feel like we feel. Um, we know that, you know, people are going to have to take some type of pain medication. I, I get that. We, we all get that. You know, we're, oh, yeah. not, we're not against it at all. So I want to make, I know what y'all were saying. I just want to clarify for people. Well, some, I, yeah. some people well, like to jump the gun, you know, yeah. and that's not well, what's I, being said. No, no, no. That's, that's not even what I was trying to say. I mean, that just, you know, my personal viewpoint on it. Sure. You know, but there's people that, I mean, they're in pain. 24 7 you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they they need that there sure. there really is no alternative for them mm -hmm. you know right. we're losing too many within our community right now i mean sure. you know we did we just lost four of them you mm -hmm. know uh that's something i right. want to talk about thursday okay you know but uh i'm not saying that you know don't take your pain medication because, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do have medicine that I have to take every day, mm -hmm. you know, for leg, okay? Sure. But if it came to the point where the doctor took it off, took it away from me or something like that, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get in this big rampage, you know, because there's nothing I can do about it. If right. the government says, hey, you're done, you know, I'm not going to go through this big rampage. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to make anybody feel that way or something like that i'm just saying right. that you know i don't fight for it you know right and like I said i take my medication and i'm not gonna you know i mean i have to take it i understand that but mm -hmm. you know you know what i mean sure yeah that's why i would say what i was saying because you know the people that that are that are getting addicted to it it's not all um it, it's not their fault i mean i know it's not they they can't help it they you know the big problem we've talked about this in the past when um the the uh uh now my computer there it goes i'm fixing to say my computer stuck for a minute um we doctors just give people you know for an example that i use is like when um, you go to the emergency room for, say, a fractured arm or a fractured wrist or something. And they were notorious to load you up on heavy pain medication. That's right. where exactly. that's where a lot of this stuff originated from. And then right. people, you know, people started needing something stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, so I mean, yeah, that's it's not really uh, nobody's fault. It's something that has happened, um, and all we're, you know trying to say is we're not fighting over pain medication we're not getting in that rut yeah. we are pushing for cures um better treatment uh, there's stuff like we've talked about the red light therapy the b venom therapy um the uh what's that thing floating um you know there's a lot of different things out there to manage your pain eating properly gluten free gluten free is the best way to go and I'm sitting here, and I'm I'm telling you, and I need to practice what I preach. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I do. I think a lot of us do. You know, but I mean, it is, um, it it it's, it it does make a difference, man. It makes a big difference, you know, and that, and it makes a big difference with the anxiety and the depression as well. Um, I right. know when I eat. Um, kind of off the chart. Um, right now, I'm having really bad stomach issues. I don't know if it's my ulcers or what it is, so I'm not really able to eat much right now. Woke up like this this morning. Um, 
So, you know, it's it's kind of tough right now, but eating properly does make a big difference in our health all the way around. Um, I was listening to a show earlier, and the guy was talking about it, and he, he's dead on. It it it, <laughs> it makes you feel better physically, mentally. Um, it can even improve your eyesight. I mean, you know, these are things that people need to start taking serious and understand that they're out there, and we can use them to our advantage. Instead of all right. this pain, all this medication. I mean, my doc, my pr- private doctor told me. He said, "Look, son, man. He goes, the best, the best way I can tell you about medication is the more you can get off of, the better off you're going to be physically and mentally." He goes, "I'm not saying it's not. You're not going to hurt, and you know you're going to still have high blood pressure. So you got to take certain medicines." He goes, "I get that." He goes, "But the most of that stuff you can come off of." He goes, "The better off you are. Anybody is, you know." Right. Uh, so I mean, that's a good doctor to me to sit there and take time to you know. Most doctors just want to push pills on you and send you out the door. Yep, uh, exactly. You know, uh, no, I'm I'm not with that. <laughs> that's you know. I was reading an article today. I'm kind of going off subject here, you know, mm-hmm. but uh, that's fine. People, We're not, you yeah. know, when people kind of they get their their pills or whatever, and then they start selling them, mm-hmm. you know. That's what a lot of this is over to. That's why the government is strengthening and tying people's hands and, sure. you know, and stuff like that. Sure. And I have a, I'm not going to, he is a relative, but I'm not going no further than that because he does listen to the show Tom, sometimes and I don't want to, but he, right. um, he was, he was a vet mm-hmm. and he come home here and he, uh, Every time he'd go to the VA, they'd load him up with, um, oh, uh, what's the um, Vicodin? Right. And they would, I mean, they would give him more Vicodin than I could ever dream of having <coughs> in a in a hmm. week's in a month's time. Right. Well, he would take this and then he would sell it, and sure. he would just just sell it off, and it's like. What are you doing? And and now you know, and people wonder why there's such strict laws on the medication now. You sure. know, if mm-hmm. you, if the people that are doing this would stop selling their damn pills that is yep. being given to them, you know, and not on top on top of that, my, in my hometown a couple years ago, mm-hmm. there was a patient that uh, he was he was a family friend. And he got in, I mean, a really hard place. And, you know, them. Um, uh, I think it's the fentanyl patch mm-hmm. that, that has the gel. Yeah, yeah. He, um, he got into a hard spot. He needed some money, and he needed it quick. So he, the first time he ever done it, and it's the only time he ever done it, he sold one of them patches. Uh-huh. The people that he sold it to, they took it home. And I guess what they do is they cut it up and they, they take that gel out of it and mm-hmm. they must eat that gel up on that gel and it gets them high. Right. Well, the one the um the one girl that did it, she OD'd and died. Wow. And now he is now sitting in prison for selling yeah. that patch. And and mind you, Dan, this is the first time he's ever done anything like that and the first time that he's ever gotten in trouble. Right. Okay? Was he wrong? Hell yes, he was wrong. He should not have been doing this. Sure. And then people want why everybody's getting in trouble, why everybody's getting drug tested every time they go to their pain doctor. You know, quit selling the drugs that you're given when you're claiming to be in pain. To me, I don't know how a person can claim to be in a bunch of pain, but yet they sell every bit of medication they have. Sure. How, how does that work? Yeah. Can I you explain it to me? Yeah. I don't know, because I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to upset anybody or nothing, but I'm just saying, if you look at these little things, it all adds up to why there's such stiff sure. regulations. Sure. And these people are mad and blaming government and blaming this and blaming that. Yes, some of it is the government, but at the same time, it's our fault, too. Sure. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and that's that's happened... Um, Man, that happened a long time ago. That's been going on for quite some time. Um, right. I have a family member that did that, 
uh, what was what on my side of the family, but a family member that did that, and also have a family member that um, in the family that still does it. <laughs> and I'm just waiting until the day that they get caught, because um, right. that's I, I that's something I don't do, man. I, I I you know no, I don't even think about it. I mean my medic my medication is my medication, um, and I take it, you know. Um, I, it's ruined. It's ruined it for chronic pain patients. Honestly, that kind of stuff has. Um, uh, it's just. It's crazy. It is. But, I you know, apologize. I mean, I, I'm not trying to upset anybody here by any means. No, I no, I know that. Ones that are are fighting and saying, "Well, this, this, and that." Well, yeah, it might be this, this, and that. But stop and think about everything that's going into it and adding up to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just it's mm -hmm. stupid on our part, for one. You sure. know, and that is why I try to stay away from the whole opioid movement. You know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. yeah, me too. I, I don't, I, I don't want to get caught up in that because that is um, that's something that. <laughs> We, you know, I, we're looking for the bigger picture, man. We're looking for the cure or, you know, better treatment. Um, the medication is not, uh, they're not going to take it away completely. Okay, I don't care what the people say. People say, oh, they're taking it away completely. No, they're not. No, they're not. There's too much money involved. Don't get me wrong. I know the medication plays a routine in our lives every day. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But if you're at least on something that is helping a little bit sure. why he put, that's what I don't understand you know mm -hmm. and maybe it's just maybe because I'm not in that mind frame but you know <laughs> yeah I, I know I know I know what you're saying it, it, it's um people just don't uh they don't um Yeah, they just don't. Some people don't get it. Right. They don't. I, I'm, I didn't mean to get you. I didn't no. mean to get you off there. No, I kind of threw you out here, and I said, "No, <laughs> I apologize." No, you're fine. You're fine. We do. We're known to do that around here. So, <laughs> um, but, but, but you know, again, if people would be using that medication properly. They probably wouldn't be listening to the show about anxiety and depression. To be honest with you, I, I, my my feelings on it. Well, okay. Now that one you could kind of take different ways. Uh, some people cannot afford their medication every month. Well, no, and I, I I I understand that. Yeah. I so I mean, they that. might. A lot of them, you know, try to you know stretch it out because right. you know. Yeah. They really can't afford. They know they can't afford their next, you know, time around. Sure. So yeah, there's too many th reasons for people to be, you know, having that that problem with their medication. Mm -hmm. You know, and just the fact that you know, even you, you know, you're not going to be able to afford to get a prescription refilled, right? Is enough to get you anxious. So uh, oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that. I mean, you're right, Wayne. Thanks for. Put me in my place and corrected me on that. <laughs> I didn't mean. I mean, you know what I meant. I didn't. I didn't mm -hmm. mean it that way. I know people um, struggle to buy their prescriptions. Trust me, I know. And I want to say this. Um, I don't. I, we've talked about this before, and this is a little bit off subject. Still, I, I mean, it, it it has to do with the medication and everything, so it all ties in. But um, I know here in Florida, and I've I've said this before on previous shows that when you have Medicare here, you can get. Um, your secondary uh, Medicare Complete, I think it's called, mm -hmm. and they have different ones: United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Blue Cross, uh, Blue Cross of Florida, Cigna, Aetna, all of those. Um, United Healthcare is the best one, and I don't get paid nothing for saying this. This is just my personal experience. Um, United Healthcare is one of the best here in the state. Uh, if you make under a certain amount of money a year. The state will help pay for the cost of the Medicare and everything, which they don't have in other states because Florida is a retirement state. So, huh, 
There's yeah. a little there's a little trick for the trade for you people that want to move to